film room. Um, I have a video production business and a film business, and I'm excited about starting this trip. Oh, I'm Jack. I'm working here. Hi, everyone. I'm Jack. <laughs> I'm Sam, also with the Outport Pictures. I'm, um, I'm <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeffrey the Christopher of um, Desert Eye Productions. <laughs> isn't always about a They call Gora. Friday the 13th a supernatural thriller because he's not normal. He's not human. He keeps oh. living even though he should be dead. How yeah, he's a, a some sort of wraith or something. So, yeah. Um, and we, yeah, I mean, it's a con. We are also, like, kind of honestly, like, we wanted to talk to this group first about a certain amount of 
displeasurement. We're displeased. We're very displeased. Um, we're kind of like really angry with independent filmmakers. And to be honest, I've spent the past, you know, actually I spent my whole life growing up here on the East Coast, hearing people run their mouths about independent film and we don't need Hollywood and East Coast is gonna blow up. Man, we're gonna just like Hollywood here on the East Coast, but it hasn't happened. Um, and I think there's actually some really clear reasons why. I think we are all our own problem. I think independent filmmakers in general, people who work or say that they want to be independent filmmakers or whatever, are their own problem. Part of the problem, I think, is this attitude of, well, Hollywood's been doing it forever, so everything they do must be right, so we should do it the way they do it. But then people pick and choose like all the wrong aspects to imitate. And this attitude of, I'm going to come to the South and talk like this movie do LA producer, it's not going to fucking get you anywhere. This is the South. People don't like to be talked to that way. And you get way farther here by having that laid-back southern attitude of barter and trade and friendship and relationships. and relationships and networking in that system. The other part of it is that I think everybody's had the wrong idea when they go, well, we're going to make one great movie and everybody's going to pay attention and then we'll blow up on these coasts. It, it hasn't worked. So why do we keep preaching something that doesn't work? We need to put out films. The reason Hollywood is Hollywood is how many films do they put out every year? You might not like horror, but they put out a couple hundred horror movies every year. Most of them go straight to DVD and make shit ton of money. You may not like drama or romance, but guess what? They still put out a couple hundred every year, and they make a lot of money. People need quantity, especially nowadays. You have a giant media flux. This huge hole has been created. Straight to DVD is going to take over. Independent filmmakers... People are making a lot of money all over the world, especially globally. When you start talking about you know, production companies in London that shoot their stuff and it only gets released in the United States straight to DVD. People in the U.S. are shooting stuff that goes straight to DVD in Japan and Korea. People in Korea are shooting stuff that only goes straight to DVD here in the U.S. And they're making plenty of money. And they're not complaining. And so why is the East Coast sitting around like kind of twiddling its thumbs? Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I could talk about that's pissing me off. But one of the big things is when we did Ringside Rosary, I tried to walk around and say to people, if you've got favors, now it's time to call them. I called every favor I had on Ringside Rosary. And I figured we would do Ringside Rosary, I'd be tapped on favors, and that'd be the end of it, and I'd have to leave Asheville, and I'd move on to New York or LA. And I was wrong. I was dead wrong. Calling in my favors had other people calling in their favors. And we all got together, and so I met all these amazing people, including some of the people here in this room, who are willing to work with us again, and they're willing to give us more favors. Valen Reiner did all that shit for free, and uh, I thought that'd be it, one project. Valen Reiner, ready for the next one. So, basically what I think we're saying is, I don't, if I say to somebody, you want to get involved in film, and you work part-time at Burger King, and I say, I'll give you a job as building something for my set. And you say, well, I can't work for free. Fuck you. Who are you? What do you make in a month working at Burger King? Sam is giving me $50,000. And he's already agreed that we're coming out. We're just going to tell people outright because we're kind of sick of this shit. He's putting up $50,000 so we get spent in a month for our next film. And the idea is not one film, but more films, to keep making films, to keep them coming out so the rest of us can eventually get jobs. So why is the person who's working at Burger King, Burger King part-time, who has a resume, I've been doing this for five years, yeah, but you're still working at Burger King, so you're not really doing it, you know what I mean? You're really you're working at Burger King doing this kind of part-time. You want to break out, you want to get a job in film, you need to invest part of your time and money. You gotta put your money where your mouth is. If that's just time, if that's just taking time off of work, whatever. That's what we need to do. We need to come together as a group and start putting out projects. I'm kind of annoyed when I, I'm not giving anybody crap here, but I get really annoyed. I keep hearing people go, oh, we should get active. Let's do a short film together. And I'll pitch you an idea. You got an idea? Okay, we got an idea. All right, now we'll meet. We'll do it. It's insulting. It takes years to write a good script. To put a really good production together. You cannot just sit down in a room, spit something out, go shoot it, and expect that to help the film community, or help you, or help your friends, or help anybody else. For there to be work in film, in the independent community, paying work for any of us, there has to be more films. One film a year doesn't cut it. 
One film every six years, sure as hell they've been cut out. Lionsgate is here doing a film for fifty million dollars right now. They're pulling all sorts of casting extra shit. But guess what? All the other major jobs, union, people from California, every every time a big production comes here, we are not a studio. We are not the hub. We're the location. They bring all their people here, they bring all their equipment, they come, they shoot, they leave. Does that give any of us work? No. It doesn't help at all. We have to stand up, get together as a group, and put film after film after film after film out. It might take 50 years. I don't know. It might take hundreds of thousands of films. I don't know. I don't think so. I think if we get together in the next five years and we consistently put out films, within five years we can all be under contract working for our own studio. We're sitting around, I spend 14 hours a day working right now, not just on our film, but trying to track down distribution, trying to track down studios, trying to create bridges, not for one film, not for Ringside, not for our next film, period, for all of us. If I can find someone who's already shot a film and I've got the length of the distribution, i got no problem going and just moving it along because every film that comes out of the East Coast makes all of us look that much more legitimate. And I get really tired, well, okay, well, then you're going to make them too fast, and they won't have any quality. You cannot s start cutting yourself off. We have to put out a lot of films, and they all need to be quality. This idea that, like, well, I need to spend seven years to put out a quality film. Okay, if you've got $500 million, and you're doing Titanic Part 6, it might take you seven years. But you don't have $700 million. You don't have the rights to Titanic. You're not getting Leonardo DiCaprio. Get serious. He died, anyway. he died anyway, right. Well, the girl can come back as an old lady to a prequel <laughs> where she remembers the other dude that drew her naked. Okay, just because he's dead doesn't mean he doesn't have an evil twin brother. This is, ah, thank you. Yeah, thank God for soap operas. We would never have an evil twin brother. He's sort of retarded. So, it's really, for us, it's become an attitude of like, let's stop talking about a project. Let's talk about a revolution. Let's talk about building an infrastructure. We're not doing this next film and putting all our money in necessarily into putting it on the screen, as people say. I mean, we are. But we're also buying a computer that is costing us a shit ton. And we may very well have the strongest computer in Western North Carolina once it's built and done. We're doing that for the next film and the next film and the next film so that we can edit these films and pop them out, have them at high quality, Blu-ray, everything. There is nothing stopping us to do the full package. We're looking into how to get our Kindle book version and the script on the same disc. You buy the disc, you get the soundtrack, you get the Kindle, you know, you get the movie, you get the special features. Why aren't people doing this? The investment, to be totally honest, compared to like what I thought it would cost us to build that kind of computer is minimal. It is not as much as you think, but you've got to be willing to sit down and put, put your money where your fucking mouth is. And Sam, like, to be totally honest, is a miracle. You know, he came to the last set, he watched me on Ringside Rosary, he seen me do this kind of thing before, and he was like, Jack's got people coming to work for him, he can put all the together, he did that entirely with $10,000, pretty much all of it was mine, and I still had people that were called up with no fucking experience. And I don't mean to, like, I start cursing, and I'm sorry if I offend anybody, but I, these adjectives feel important so people understand that I'm serious. Um, and I still had people going, well, I need to be paid. I want $1,000 for a month for my work. Who are you? Uh, I'm an actor. What have you done? I was in a play. That does not make sense. Jack, I'm amazed. I had no idea whilst that was going on that people were coming and asking me for money when, to me, it was very clear from the very beginning that this was a cooperative. It would blow yeah. your mind the I'm emails really shocked, that I ever actually. got from people. And we even had people who came on and said, I understand you can't pay me, not a problem. I'm willing to do it. We've worked with them for a month. Then they email Val. When am I going to get paid and how much? No. We are losing time. We lose quality of project. But this affects everything. Every time we jerk each other off, and every time we stiff each other, and every time we like, seriously, every time, every time someone goes, I, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you out with this project, and blah, 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 and they don't show up to the meetings, you're screwing yourself. You want to do a film co-op? We've been talking about it for months. We're willing to put up the money to do a website. That would help. So we could all log on and whatever. I've already emailed states. I've emailed 13 different co-ops in 13 different states and one in Canada. 
And most of the, most of them have the same opinion. If you're not